Do you know who you are? Do you struggle to be yourself? Have you ever wondered how much like outside things influence you and the person you are? Well, today in luck, we're going to talk about what it means to be yourself. Uh, this is the Existential Stoke Podcast. I'm Danny. Everybody, Randy, what's up, Randy? Yo, Danny. So, do you do you feel like you're living a life that's true to you? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> occasionally yeah. on the good days yeah well that's that's kind of that's what i was thinking when i just said sometimes because it's like the days when i feel good it's like yeah i'm living my life true to myself doing every and then the days that i'm not feeling good it's like where did i go wrong i'm a failure <laughs> what's wrong yeah. with me nothing's ever gonna work out <laughs> yeah. it's a wild roller coaster right now yeah okay. yeah it's funny. I've been thinking about this a lot because it's like, you know, you always hear people say like, you do you and like, blah, blah, blah. And, blah, and it's mm. like very like pop psychology empty things, I think. But you I think a lot. Bro. Yeah, dude. YOLO. Do it, <laughs> no, yeah. And that like, what is that? You only I'm terrible. Once. There you go. I'm really bad. When people bring me yeah. things to just the letters, I have a hard time figuring them out. Oh, Maybe it's because yeah. I don't use, I don't know. Anyway, but like, you know how like, there's so much of like who we are, how we think is really, you could, you know, you look back to like where you're born, your family, the culture, the community, all these things. Cause we're like, we're like sponges when we're little. And then you get older and you're trying to live your, your life. And it's like, how much of your beliefs, values, ideas, choices, or even your own, you know, and how much are and like, then, oh, and then you and then we're blaming other people for their choices, values, actions, things like that, as if they had any choice in the matter. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I think like, what is it? Uh, I think Sar Sarge says, he says we're condemned to be free, but he says we're thrown into existence, right? Like, like we don't have a choice. The one thing we don't, we can't choose is where we're born and when we're born, right? We're just, we just exist all of a sudden. And it's like, yeah. and then you're just surrounded by ideas and etiquette and norms and beliefs. And then even as you get older, then there's advertising and social media and all, all these things trying to convince you to think a certain way and to buy into their sort of way of thinking. It's like really hard when you think about it that way to like mm -hmm. have your own, like, I guess, thoughts that aren't like molested or like, you know, uh, what's that word? Poisoned by the outside. Influence, in yeah. Influence. Yeah, That's a good I one. mean, <laughs> but also not only, not only where and when, but also like your anything physical characteristics about like, you, I mean, how you look, if you're yeah. disabled, uh, your race, your sexuality, your nationality, all of this stuff, you have no choice about it. And yet nope. we judge the S out of people just because <laughs> of how they are. And it's just it's like, kinda... I do that. I do that sometimes too, where I get really pissed at people. And then I'm like, but wait, it's not like he chose that, you know? No, I mean, that's the funny thing. Like, you know, it's like, and that's the other weird conundrum, right? Is that we think we are, we're free. We think we make choices. We think we're like, we're choosing for ourselves. But like, when you really think about it, are we? I mean, ever, you know, and like, maybe we can, maybe it's possible to get well, there. But like, I would argue like a lot of our choices are probably not our own. Like, it's crazy. Yeah. So here's, here's like an example that okay. sometimes happens is like, I'll see somebody who's just gigantic. And we have plenty of examples in America of people who are just absolutely gigantic. And I'm like, Oh my gosh. And you can, and they're like squeezing tubes of mayo into their mouth and you can actually hear them getting fatter. And I get all pissed off at them. And then I realize like, it's not like they really chose that because if they were given the choice, do you want to look like this? Or do you want to have like a chiseled six pack, like Brad Pitt? I'm sure pretty much everyone would choose Brad Pitt, but there's something that's misleading them. And, well, and maybe also, they don't have the genetics and some of the other stuff. But like, you know, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff misleading them. They're probably living a life they don't enjoy. Somebody told them, you know, just go on a keto diet and you can eat whatever the heck you want as long as there's no carbs in it. And so they're just shoveling in mayonnaise. Well, you know, and it's hard, too, because, you know, it's also like you live in a society like ours where like portions are huge, you know. Uh, there's a lot of unhealthy food and there's a lot of places too like in cities and stuff where you can't healthy food is hard to get or like it costs a fortune you know because all the stuff that we subsidize is like processed stuff and like 
corn and stuff and like things that aren't good for you anyway. So it's well, it's, it's a really it's crazy because like the the whole diet industry is out of yeah. whack. Like there's so many millions of different diet trends and diet books and everything like that. And really, you know, it comes down to just not eating calories. Like simply, it's, it doesn't matter what you eat. Like the poor example, but nobody in the Holocaust was still fat because of their genetics. They got they less calories. Be, yeah. They lost weight. You know, like that's simple. a really that's a really <laughs> but you know no I think you, no you you are right I mean like it's a lot of it's like outside of our hands and then on top of that too I think the crazy part is we also especially in the U S like everything is like look at this quick easy solution like you mm -hmm. go to the doctors and everybody expects the doctor just to write a prescription for whatever the hell it is right because it's easier than any other option mm -hmm. and i think this is like this is a big part of it too but like you know we we buy into it because you know there's a lot of other people that are benefiting from that model there's a lot of people that are making tons of money and it's like you know and i think this is the weird part about you know being yourself it's like how do you you know how do you even know what thoughts are yours yeah yeah okay so there was a study done in israel uh not too long ago that took a look at people with pain and it took a look at the x-rays of people with pain and the x-rays of people without pain and there was statistically no difference in the x-rays of people with and without pain. Mm -hmm. So like all of this stuff that doctors are treating people for, particularly like billion dollar, uh, multi-billion dollar industries of like orthopedic surgery, stuff like that, all of that, no statistical difference in pain between people with and without these types of things. Yeah. yeah. But look at it. What do you make the most money on is chronic stuff. And, you know, I was thinking about that the other and day. surgery. <laughs> Yeah. And you watch TV, dude. If you watch TV, all the commercials are for medicine and health. And so if you see that enough, you start thinking about it, right? Well, That's I mean, also medicine. politics right now. Well, that too. Yeah, that too. <laughs> that comes every, you know, constantly too. Four years. But yeah, yeah. It is interesting though, because it's like we're exposed to this stuff all the time. And so it's like that is influencing how you think. I always liked, oh, uh, was it? Epicurus had that idea of natural desires and artificial desires, or he called them vain. And he said, naturals are like the ones that you need for life, like, you know, like eating, drinking, that kind of stuff. And the vein or artificial desires are the ones that like are, you know, caused by your, basically by outside forces. So like, you know, in contemporary terms, like advertising, community, family, things we think we need because of the world we live in. And mm -hmm. so much of it is stuff we don't need, you know? And I think it's, it goes from like, you know, getting the new phone every six months or like, you know, stuff like this with like, you know, finding a quick fix to like, you know your weight problem or your health problem or your pain or whatever it is or the easy solution mm. yeah and so i think it's it's interesting because this idea of like being yourself or your true self is like so really hard i think to do and requires a lot of work if you really want to try and do it mm -hmm. yeah because you really gotta listen like oh, it's because it's just a quiet little voice and everything else is so loud, like blah, 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 blah. And the voice you got to listen to is just like a little quiet voice. And uh, yeah, it's a tough one. You might even have to learn how to make that voice talk too. <laughs> like literally, mm -hmm. if it's been that mm -hmm. long. You know, it's funny. It's in, uh, you know, in, Zara, in Nietzsche's Zarathustra, he goes and becomes a hermit to find wisdom and truth. In other words, like he had to leave everything. I think in some sense, maybe that's, you would have to do that, right? Like totally leave all of society by yourself in order to actually like wow. think for yourself. So th I've, this, okay. I've been getting pissed off recently about people like thinking that you have to be all Zen when you're meditating because <laughs> like, okay. So like one of the things that I do is Pilates and a lot of times they'll be like, yeah, just like be peaceful. And it's like, that's it's like that. completely the antithesis of modern life and meditation that's a byproduct of meditation like if you do it long enough you might eventually get some peace but it's not like you can just sit down and be peaceful like if you're and and i and i hear these people yeah. all the time that are like i try and sit there and my mind is just going a million miles an hour and my mind will sh shut down and i can't meditate and it's like no that's exactly you are meditating right there and you yeah. just sit with that long enough and eventually it'll quiet down but right now you need to be agitated and you need to just be like pissed off and just hear all the chatter in your mind and all of that. Well, you know, it's funny that that's what's great about meditation, but it takes a long time to get there too. And I think that's why so many people do get frustrated with it. It's like, you know, I do, it is funny, like 
even in the modern world, like I was watching this thing the one time. So it was like monks, uh, I forget where they were, but they were in this like temple, you know, super way out of the way, like up this mountain, but they all had cell phones, you know? And they were like, you know, we're still living in the modern world. But, like, I was like, maybe they have it right. You know, you just go away. <laughs> it's like secluded yeah. thing. You know, you're out of all, I mean, you still have access. You can still talk to people, but you're not like in the world so much. It's probably so much easier to like, focus on things like yourself and like your mental health and things. Cause like, I, you're not I, mean, surrounded. I notice, I notice the difference when I go out of the urban area to a less urban area. And I notice I can spend like three days there and I'm calmer. And yeah. so like, it's, it's clearly evident that, and, and I was like living in an urban area. I get pissed off at people all the freaking time. They're walking too slow. They're on their phone and not There's looking too up. Many of them. standing in the wrong <laughs> way. Yeah, like all this stuff, just nonstop, just get pissed off at them. And then you go out where there aren't people, and it's just like, ha, ah, nobody get pissed off at. This is awesome. I always wondered if we were even meant to live in like cities like today. Mm -mm. They're so big. No, of course like, not. I was watching something. It was on a. It was on ancient Rome, and they were talking about like the, you know big city, and it was like four thousand people, and yeah. like. That's like a tiny community, you know, in our in contemporary, really small. I mean, really small. Mm -hmm. And we have cities with tens of millions. Like, that's insane. That is so yeah. many people in such a small area. Yeah, I don't, it's probably too much, like, just too much sensory overload. And, and back then when they had those cities, you were surrounded by family. Now, most people who live in cities live there by themselves. Yeah. And that so is true, like, right? Yeah. Dude, we we live a life that we're definitely not intended for. But the good thing is that we evolve. It just you know takes a long just not, time. It's, it's just gonna be after us. us. I know. <laughs> after we all after we die and destroy the world, we'll evolve eventually. Yeah, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. I think. It's so, just what does it mean to be true to yourself, Danny? Yeah, man, it's hard, right? I think you have to really. I think you have to, like you said, you have to listen to yourself. I think if you give yourself a chance to, like, actually, like, figure out what matters to you and like actually be honest with yourself. Cause I think that's the hard thing too. There's so many obligations that we place on ourselves from the outside. And like, you have to say no to stuff. You have to start like asking yourself, like, do I really, is this something I really want or am I doing it because my family wants me to, or society thinks I should, or because I think it would look good on this thing or whatever. Right. Like start really kind of asking these hard questions and then keep asking them. Cause the reality mm -hmm. is, is like, if you don't keep doing it, you can quickly slip back into that external pressure. I mean, we can't get away from it. It's impossible in modern day. Like, you know, unless you're going to go, I don't know, live on your own in Alaska or something, I guess that's an option. But even then, you still need people because you still need supplies and stuff. So it's, yeah, yeah. 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 I've been doing a lot of journaling recently. Like, it helps. You remember, you remember when we were working through the artist way and we had to write, mm -hmm. I don't know, what was that, five pages a day or something? It was something a lot, ridiculous. yes. Yeah, it was <laughs> way too much. But I've been doing a lot of writing recently because uh, I I noticed that I had a lot of repressed anger. And really? And it was causing me a bunch of pain. Yeah, really, really. And good. yeah, so it was causing me a bunch of pain. And so I've been writing about it recently. And it's just like all these things that kind of, helping to empty out and like it's kind of crazy because i'll be sitting and i'll be writing and then i'll notice i take like a really big exhale and it's just like ah and i'm just like whoa i must have been holding that for a while yeah but that's another good example is because i've been thinking about that too like thinking about your past and like the things that have influenced the person you are now and it's like most of us don't think about that on a regular basis and like if you're not doing that how can you be yourself if you're not unpacking how you got to where you are right and i think it's really hard and it's also hard because memory is not always clear either so you have to like i think revisit these things a lot journaling is a really good one yeah i like that meditation is mm -hmm. really helpful too it's hard <laughs> especially if you're just yeah. starting but it does it is very helpful or it can be yeah. yeah i also think you gotta really learn to disappoint people yeah. like that's I mean, maybe maybe not everybody. Maybe some people just love going along with the flow and just doing what everybody else does. And maybe it, for them, disappointing people isn't. But like, I think most people want to do something and they're afraid they'll be judged. They're afraid other people will talk. They're afraid they'll hurt somebody's feelings. They're afraid of all this stuff. And guess what? It's going to happen. 
Like yeah. if you live life exactly how you want to live it, you're going to piss some people off. You're going to hurt some people. And yeah. chances are some of them are going to be family, you know, yeah. but you have to be willing. I mean, it's, it's like the other option is you could just suck it up and, you know, live for everybody else's approval and then get cancer. Yeah. You know, and it's funny. I think that's how so many people are living though. That's the crazy thing. You know, they're living for other people's approval rather than for their own. And like, you're right. I think you have to face your fears and you're going to make people upset. There's no getting around it. And mm -hmm. that's the hard thing too, because if you're going to be living your own life, you're going to be on your own in the literal sense. Right. Like, and you're going to have to be willing to say no to stuff, a lot of stuff, but also yes to yourself. And that's going to put you in that position. That's going to be very difficult. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think it takes maturity too. Actually, I think it does. Maturity can help to some extent. Age, you know. It, okay, yeah, I wanted to talk to you about this. I'm glad you brought that up. Oh, good. You remember, you remember how a few years ago when we started doing this, I was reading those books, and I think it was like uh, "How to Win Friends and Influence People" or maybe some something. Where like they yeah. were talking about, oh, it could have been "Think and Grow Rich." That I think that was from there, where they were talking about how. A person doesn't even come into their strides until they're 40. Like 40 to 60 is the best years of someone's life. And we were like just about to enter 40. And we were like, oh, my goodness. Thank God. The best <laughs> is coming. And so far, it's been kind of like, wah, wah. <laughs> I mean, I don't think it's been terrible. I think there's there's a lot of there's a lot of foundations being laid, you know, mm. Maybe that's Maybe. the way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. It is funny. You know, it's funny when you met, I remember when you mentioned that too, because I remember uh, there was this, in one of the books I used to read, that one of the ancient historians, he used to calculate a person's age by assuming that their greatest work was completed when they were 40. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> Which is like a, sense. a great way to do it though, right? Like, it was his best book. He must have been 40 well, then. So then, <laughs> yeah, yeah but it. you just, you just watched Three Body Problem. And yeah. remember in there in the first episode where the scientist was saying, yeah, if you're not published by the time you're 30, you're done. And like, yeah. that's, that's the crazy thing is that's the mentality nowadays where like, if you're not published by 30, there's no chance you're going to be published. And if you're not, if you're not an internet millionaire by 18, your life's over. You might as well just offer yeah. yourself. And it's just you know like, what are that? these? Yeah. And we know your brain's not fully developed until you're 28. So how the hell is that possible? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah it's insane i love i love the story so there's a really good movie called the founder or founder it's about roy Kroc from mcdonald's oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah i love that story because he literally was a failure his like whole entire life everything he did just failed and then eventually he's like probably close to 50 60 something like that and he's just like, come on, just one thing work. And that's the coolest thing about success in life is like, you really only need one home run. Yeah. But it's like, it's like having the persistence to keep going up to bat. Yeah. Wasn't like KFC like that guy too, like that? Wasn't he really old? Oh, Colonel only Sanders. Yeah. He was even older. He was like in his 80s. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Dude. I was just, you know, uh, there's this, um, uh, What's the guy? It's Red Red Barn Mill or something. They make like oatmeal and stuff. But the guy oh, that yeah. found the company, he Red just Mill. passed away. Yeah, Red, Red Mill, Mill, something like that, or Bob's yeah. Red. I don't know what the hell it's called. But anyway, he was a uh, he. The guy just passed away. But when he founded the company, he had he had been a manager like J.C. Penney's before, worked at a gas station or something. And like it was like when he was fifty, he founded it. And like it mm -hmm. did, he never did really well. Tried to get buy out a bunch of times, and he ended up actually the employee owned now. He basically had the employees like buy in and now it's owned by them which is pretty cool but yeah like he did all that when he was like 50 so that's pretty amazing yeah mm -hmm. gives you hope but i mean it's also a good indicator that you can always start living your own life and always make those changes you just have to do it and that's the hard part because it's like there's so much like the world doesn't want us to change or be ourselves they want us to be like everybody else and i think that's the hard part because the people that are themselves i think do much better long term and happier yeah well you know? it's like the beginning is always the hardest part because it's like, I don't know, Newton's whatever law where it's like, if you want to change an some kind of law, yeah, something like that, <laughs> changing whatever. But it's, it's the hardest part because if you want to change direction, you got to put forth a lot of energy. It's like if you look at a train, 
because we have a yeah. whole bunch of examples of steam engines nowadays that like you know, chuka, yeah. chuka, chuka, chuka. at the <laughs> beginning it takes a lot of energy to get moving and it's really really slow but then once it's going it's really really going but the, that's the same thing with life if you want to make any changes in the beginning it's going to require a monumental amount of work just to well, make like small your, little things. your car uses way more gas to get up to speed than to maintain speed yeah. oh but mine's electric vehicle so oh uh, man damn <laughs> <laughs> yeah all these examples remember, can be outdated too. remember that south park with the priuses and they're like farting the smug yeah <laughs> oh, oh my gosh that's so good oh, Jesus. oh i don't know if that helps anybody but you know so i guess what we find being yourself is difficult takes a lot of work. being yourself is difficult but it's worth it oh you know what I to your so. point yeah, and I think, yeah, you were, you were saying too about a lot of effort at the beginning. I think it's also really hard at the beginning just because when you're young, you just don't know who you are and everybody else has so much influence on you. So if you are mm. young, give yourself some time. It's easier, you know, as you get older. But also, like, you know, yeah, think about it. Think oh, about who you are. Yeah, I agree. That pissed me off so much, the people who knew what they wanted to do. And still, still, like, people who are so sure of them, it pisses me the heck off because, like... Well, you know, it's, all, it's also funny, too, because it's like, you know, you... Like, I think so many things I did because, like, I thought I was supposed to, like, going to college and stuff like that. And, doing, and like, but not having a clear idea of what I want to do. And it's like, in hindsight, it's like, why the hell did I do? You know, like, really? Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, you know, I don't regret it. It happened. It's what it is. But, like, yeah, it's like you're so young to be making these decisions. It's insane. But, you know, mm -hmm. it is what it is, right? It is what it is. <laughs> we have a lot of times so we can always change it. That's the good thing. True. True. Yeah. yeah Naval Ravikant, he said, like, it would be a great uh it would be a great system if every i don't know 10 years or so we could take a year off to kind of change careers how awesome would that be right mm -hmm. to like be able to like think about or like you know and have the option even that would be amazing yeah but, you know in some sense we do though because we live so long like we can you can start it's not impossible you just have to be willing to do it yeah, yeah. just gotta put in the work like that yeah. train chuka, yeah. chuka, 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 chuka. <laughs> <laughs> we'll use only examples moving forward from the industrial revolution <laughs> yeah right yeah. it's like yeah. the black lung like when you're yeah. you know when you only got off on Christmas day from the factory <laughs> <laughs> I think I got the black lung yeah. alright we're done well, if you enjoyed our rambling <laughs> This is the Existential Story Podcast. Please check us out on YouTube, wherever you get your podcasts. Please like, share, subscribe. It helps us out a lot. We'll be back later this week with another episode. Until then, later, Randy. Later, Danny. <laughs>